At the end of the road of absolutely no resistance, the girls arrive at the fountain. Mild surprise, the well has dried up, for whatever reason. Now this means that everyone taking the test failed, right? The objective was to collect the water, there is no way to collect the water, therefore everyone gets an F. Or at the very least, the result is non-conclusive. The teachers didn't bother to check whether or not the quest can be completed before sending the students into the murder hole. But that's basic High Guardian Academy incompetence, so I'm not truly shocked. Jumping ahead a bit, the girls do actually find another fountain, and time collects a vial of the magical remedy, but she never hands it in, she keeps it for herself. So even the Protag team never completes the quest, and yet, this mission, this vital make or break test for freshman guardians, is ignored and utterly forgotten by the end of the episode. I'm dead serious. No one mentions it again, not the teachers, nor the students, not even the protagonists themselves. I have to underline this as fiercely as I possibly can. The test, which this whole episode revolves around, the premise, which we spent several minutes establishing in detail, just vanishes. The second half of this episode, including the conclusion, is written as if the test never even existed, and the characters were spelunking the cave just because. No one in the academy is alarmed by the fact that the waters have dried, the students don't talk about it, the faculty takes no action, this incident leads to nothing, the characters themselves comment on the fact initially. This fountain's completely dry. Huh. Do the teachers know? Is this a test? But as soon as that statement fades into memory, the memory of this incident fades to nothing. The heroes don't pursue the obvious questions, and the adults responsible for these youths and this test apparently never bother to ask what happened down there or to check if any of them actually succeeded at the task. It's the mutant cat episode all over again, except arguably worse, since this test was so hyped up and included most of the freshman class. The test itself should be rescheduled at least. As it currently stands, there is no true conclusion to this story arc, there is no epilogue, it's like every character in the show is suffering from memory loss. This is the fundamental flaw in this show's writing. I mean, there are several fundamental flaws, but this is the all-encompassing, the alpha and the omega, the flaw. Nothing matters. Even a self-contained conflict spanning a single episode is never properly tied up. This type of slapdash writing is beyond frustrating. The viewer can never be certain which information on screen actually matters, and what will be ignored going forth. You cannot communicate a story like this. Big obvious events need to lead into big obvious consequences, cause and effect, the basis of real life, and thus the basis of cohesive storytelling, not even automatically good storytelling, just functional storytelling. Back to the moment to moment stupidity, before anyone can work their brain too much, the video game dungeon springs a random battle upon the girls. It's the return of the Parasex, this time a chunkier variety. Oh hey little big guy. The creature was right there in plain sight. How did you think it was that small? How did you not see that it was enormous? How stupid does this show think its audience to be? But no time to think, it's time to fight. Time to fight! I just fucking said that. And here we have the first proper showcase of action in the show. Aside from the Manticore Massacre flashback from episode 3. Fantasy adventure show, 7 episodes in, finally some action. And as is the case with every other aspect of this animated atrocity, the combat is... just absolute sludge. It only lasts a minute or so, but it feels twice as long, which is the exact opposite of what action should be. There is zero energy, no choreography, 
The girls just swat their weapons around and use the most basic methods of destroying their foes. And even though there were dozens of parasects all ganging up on them, they never get overwhelmed, because the ones out of frame apparently just wait for their turn to get annihilated. How friendly of them. Lackluster action is hard to explain fully without going into directing, cinematography, or the methods and mechanics of animation itself, you know, visual side, which I do not claim to be an expert of in any degree. But in general sense, the core of satisfying action is built upon the ebb and flow, the changes within the moment, the shift of power between the combatants, the feeling of not quite knowing who will end up on top and how until the event unfolds is the thing that creates dynamic action. It's like a collection of mini plot twists in a sequence. This holds true both in duels and bigger battles involving a group of fighters, as well as something not directly combat, but action nonetheless, such as chase scenes. Of course, random stuff simply happening for the sake of surprise is not the point. Like with every other aspect of storytelling, consistency is the key. What can the characters do? How can they utilize their skills most effectively? How far can the writer push the characters and their skill set without actually killing them? A dance on the edge of the knife, a close victory against the odds. That's good drama, that's compelling. Characters actually achieving something impressive. Not just in general, but impressive for them. This show has none of that. Even in scenes like this, where there are dozens of enemies, there should be at least a bit of back and forth between the heroes and the monsters. Make the heroes deflect a few blows before dispatching the creature, don't just annihilate them by the truckload with no effort whatsoever. If the enemy feels weak, there is no sense of accomplishment. Action is supposed to be exciting. That is the sole reason to have it. It should grab the audience at least on some minor level, make them feel like they are there in the moment, an electrifying sensation. Literally action. This here is just wimpy and sad. It's just... Monsters attack, I guess. Let's beat them up for a while. That's what fantasy people do. This scene is the perfect example of misplaced priorities as it relates to chosen genre. The show wears the disguise of an action-adventure battle school shounen magical girl whatever series. But as we have established, in truth, its only goal is to act as an outlet for the creator's shitty ideas. Boring OCs, hurl-inducing self-insert fantasies, obnoxious soapboxing for idiotic political views, all the worst telltale signs of amateur writing. The authors don't care about the genre or type of story they claim to be telling. They've decided to make an action-adventure battle school shounen magical girl whatever series, because that's the type of nebulous genre a vast portion of anime slash cartoon viewing populace go for. You have your demographic already established, most anyone and everyone. But if you wish to make an action-adventure story, it stands to reason that someone on the creative team should have a passion and a vision for the action side of things. It doesn't need to be ultra bombastic or highly complex. Just something that feels like it actually belongs and the people making it cared and not merely a formality. Also, also, the way the girls slaughter all these poor creatures is just cruel. They are introduced all cutesy and helpful, and one of them even takes liking to Parsley. It looks like the tiny thing is going to become a mascot buddy for her. That's how it would work in any other show. <laughs> Thanks for the help, Momo! But then the little one just disappears and all of its relatives get exterminated. Because that's funny. Why can't we have these things as mascots 
or the Trixies from episode 1. Those are adorable. These are way better designs than those nightmare fuel goat frog things. Those are everywhere, as if they are so charming we cannot get enough of them. The writers don't even know what they have or how to utilize it properly. And now these big travers get killed by the dozen while screaming in agony. Giving them angry eyes does not make them any less cute. And they aren't evil. They are just defending their home. And then these vapid girls just come prancing in and wipe them out because adventure and stuff. Suddenly there's blood and money shots of fatalities. It all comes of mean-spirited. True, the sudden gruesomeness comes from the left field every time it comes up. The show has a serious problem with tone. The visuals and dialogue is full on pastel candy colors and friendship between girls, allegedly, and fun and sunshine and sugar and spice and everything progressively nice. But then from time to time someone remembers that this was supposed to be for mature audiences and thus they throw in some windsworthy swears and unnecessary gore. I don't mess with that shit. This is for trapping me, you bastard! <laughs> time, help me catch this asshole! The tonal whiplash leaves this air of utter confusion every time it appears. It's really uncomfortable, in the sense I feel embarrassed on behalf of the creatives behind this clusterfuck. And I'm not a prude, far from it, in case you haven't noticed. The issue is not with the swearing or graphic violence. The problem is the mishandled tone. The general kiddie vibe of this show does not mesh with the handful of adult moments, lasting a few seconds each. This kind of handling of mature material ironically makes the product seem all the more childish. And after murdering enough baddies, the boss monster appears. But not to fear, because Rosemary harnesses all her brain power to craft this ingenious plan. Uh, Sage! It's their queen! Shoot it! What? No! You'll get crushed! Trust me! Drop the creature on me. That's the plan. So this enormous rock crab creature doesn't wait a ton. It won't just smoosh Rosemary. It conveniently flips on its stomach so that Rosemary can just stab it in its squishy belly and hold it right atop her head, like the world's biggest seafood skewer. This is the show. This right here. This insane drivel. At every turn, the writers insult my intelligence. I hate this show, and everyone responsible for this travesty. The Parasex still want revenge and close in on the girls. Our heroes seek shelter inside this conveniently placed crevice in the wall. And for some baffling reason, the Parasex block the hole with boulders? Weren't they trying to mince the girls just a moment prior? Why would they let them go and purposefully block the only path through which to give chase? Unless they are actually pacifists and are only concerned with protecting the specific chamber they dwell in? Are they actually smart? Did the girls just murder half the community of an intelligent life form? Fun questions to ponder. Why would a Trevor be evil? The well was dry. Maybe, without magic, they mutated? What the fuck are you talking about? That is not how anything works. There is no such dumb world, not in fantasy, not in science fiction, where the lack of magic mutates anything. You absolute drooling moron. Magic mutates this cat, the lack of magic mutates these crab creatures. Which one is it? It cannot be both at the same time. I know it's a high bar at this point, but this is one of the top most retarded lines uttered in this entire show. 
just stop. Stop writing. I'm talking to every single one of you. You are all clearly incapable of forming coherent thoughts. You are utterly worthless as writers. You should not be wasting your time on anything creative, since you are so absolutely unforgivably talentless and criminally stupid. To allow this nonsense escape the pen of this cringy hairspray huffer and end up on screen to torture me. This line, this fucking line, it still hurts my brain. Not one of you stop this from happening. That makes each of you equally guilty. And as always, a huge thanks to each of you for listening till the end. For liking, subbing, commenting, it's all appreciated. And a special thank you goes to my supporters on Patreon. And an extra special thanks to my 10 euro patron Wyland. If you would like to join these fine people, or check out my other creative stuff, all the links are down below. Take care everyone, and I'll see you all in the next one.